We started uh, prop load at 7.30 a.m. this morning, flowing liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. But at uh, five minutes past uh, 10 a.m. this morning, Easter time, we went into stop flow on the liquid hydrogen side. Just minutes ago, the liquid hydrogen team detected a leak. And no, I didn't mute his voice or anything like that. That's how long that guy stayed quiet after making that announcement. It was as if he was trying to process the pain and frustration that the entire NASA team was doubtlessly feeling at that moment, along with the rest of us, as a here-we-go-again moment started to descend upon the entire Artemis team. That being the case, though, they did manage to get the entire rocket filled up, including ICPS, and even though the hydrogen leak was never completely staunched and was never completely dealt with, that doesn't necessarily mean that this mission is a bust at this point. As a matter of fact, these kinds of issues have happened before and launches have still occurred. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... So here's a rapid fire bulletin for you, just a quick review of what happened and the reason I'm showing you this amazing photo, and no that's not duplicate photos of the same rocket, that is two space shuttles side by side preparing to take flight. That's the way things used to be at Cape Canaveral, and the reason I'm showing you this is to demonstrate just how far NASA has fallen. They had three functional mobile launch towers back then, which were used during the Apollo era as well as the shuttle era, and now all three of those mobile launch towers are in various states of disassembly. Any one of those launch towers could have been converted into an SLS tower for the future just as they were converted from the Saturn V over to the shuttle, but this was never done. Instead, as I've mentioned many times in the past, for some reason which I still can't begin to fathom, they decided to convert an Ares launch tower into an SLS tower, something that it was never designed for, a rocket that was so much smaller than the SLS, and even at the moment that they lowered SLS down onto ML1, they didn't really know if it was going to take the strain until the thing actually got moving. But back in the day, the shuttle had similar problems with hydrogen leaks, especially during the 1990s, and there is good news in spite of everything that happened yesterday. Regardless of whether there's a small hydrogen leak or not, you can still launch as long as it doesn't go past a certain threshold. In previous launch attempts, the hydrogen leak has surpassed that threshold by a very substantial margin. However, in yesterday's test, that didn't happen. The leak stayed within acceptable boundaries. And even though any sort of hydrogen leak with a theoretically brand new launch tower is unacceptable, it's within the safety margins technically, and the shuttle was launched a number of times under similar circumstances. It does fall within NASA's safety guidelines to launch under these conditions, and we may never really track down all of these hydrogen leaks, given the fact that, as I have mentioned before, we have a launch tower that was very, very poorly designed, constructed, and that nobody thoroughly understands. So this may be as good as it gets, folks, and if it only gets this bad, chances are SLS will take off successfully. Even though I find this to be a pathetic state of affairs, given the amount of money and time that's been invested in this project, if it can get SLS and Artemis 1 off the ground and the rest of the mission goes well, it was worth it. Stay tuned for further updates on this channel. Check out the description for ways to support me. And as always, stay angry about space.